What's the word, y'all? Today was the last day of the NBA regular season, and there's so much to talk about, I didn't even know where to start. Matter of fact, yes, I do. Because even though this team won, even though the Minnesota Timberwolves won their game today, I've never seen a team get all the way to the finish line just to trip over their own feet. Cal Anderson calling Rudy Gobert the B-word, and he tried to throw a punch and then immediately ran away. <laughs> Which It's funny to see a seven-foot dude throw the first piece of contact and then wait for somebody to hold him back. And then Jaden McDaniels broke his own hand, bro. They were right there. No, and no matter what, this season had been an underwhelming season for the Minnesota Timberwolves. But Carthay Towns had been back. They're in the play-in. So you could have convinced yourself that like, okay, we were dealt the bad hand with Carthay Towns getting injured all the way in November. But here we go. We win one play-in game and we back in the playoffs. But now, Jaden McDaniels, who you need for a Lakers matchup in that first round, is gone. And even if you do win that game... Jaden McDaniels is an all-defensive caliber player. He was on my own personal all-defensive ballot. He is gone. And Rudy Gobert throwing a punch at his teammate. Um, I'm going to assume that he's getting some type of disciplinary actions from the organization. Or maybe they're looking at the fact that Jaden McDaniels won't be there. And they might be thinking, we can't really afford to be missing both of them defensively. So we're going to act like that didn't happen. Any other organization is suspending that man for at least a game. And if it wasn't for Anthony Edwards being the star we knew he was... This today could have been even worse than what it ended up being. Now, I don't want to keep bringing it back to the trade. I don't want to keep bringing it back to the trade. It has happened. It's been nearly, a, it's been a whole season now of the trade. Th to have this happen in game 82 with the season on the line is unforgivable work. But it's even worse when you think about the, what caused the argument and who was involved and everything that was involved and getting him there. And that's coming from a Rudy Gobert. Like, I've been a big Rudy Gobert fan for as long as he's been in the league. But these things are becoming unexcusable. No matter what this man has said to you, you have to realize, internalize, that the season is on the line tonight. I can't throw no punches at my teammates. I mean, there's other punches being thrown from the Clippers. and Bo Not punches, pushes. It's a little bit different when Bones Highland pushes Mason Plumlee. Um, because there's not... You know, three years and a hundred plus million dollars wrapped up to Mason Plumlee and Bones Highland. If the Clippers really wanted to, they could deuce out those dudes this offseason. The, the, the Rigo Bear thing is here, still around. It's going to be here. Um, and Cal Anderson is one of the better players on the team. So it's like, it's, it's, it's a lot different, especially considering uh, the Clippers with their push, they're fine. They're outside of the plan, even though they got to go against, <laughs> they got to go against the Suns. It's not going to be pretty, but it's just different and not good. And I cannot believe that it happened in game 82 of the season with this season on the line. It's just unexcusable work, especially because the, somebody wrote an article where they were asking all the people in the Timberwolves organization about Kyle Anderson and his leadership. And Rudy Gobert said he's a blunt dude. He says what he means, but you know it's, saying it's good spirited because he wants you to be the best version of yourself. And I have a thick skin or something along the lines. That came out yesterday. And today you threw the punch. Crazy time, man. <laughs> the person that was interviewing him wrote that article. That's that's a goal. That's a goal, man. But worse than the Rudy Gobert push is the, the J.D. McDaniels injury. Because you can sweep a, a miscommunication, a fight between teammates under the rug, even though it was for the whole world to see. You can say we deal with it internally and Rudy comes back to play on Tuesday. But a broken hand. McDaniels is not playing with that. And punching things and, and sports go hand in hand. Oh, that's like LeBron punched the whiteboard in the finals a few years ago. Remember that LeBron did that and didn't tell nobody. And after they lost the finals, he had a full cast on or in the baseball world, it happens way more than anything because pitchers get so frustrated, especially when they're not doing well. Or like Devin Williams a few years ago, um, uh, Zach Plesek did it. Uh, the list could go on and on. Uh, shout out to the Kenny Baseball Town. The link is in the description if you want to hear more baseball talk from me. But you cannot sweep that under the rug. And I can't put myself in his shoes, right? I've never played <laughs> any sport to the highest level. So I, I, know, I know that the emotions are an all-time high, especially in a game with this type of pressure. Right? It's the 82nd game of basketball, and it matters a ton. And Well, he matters a ton. He's only missed a few games all of the season. Um, so I can't put myself in Jaden McDaniels' shoes or in the shoes of any other person that has punched something in the locker room like uh, Amari Stoudemire punching the fire hydrant or fire extinguisher. You get what I'm saying. But I'm always amazed when it happens. And he basically has to wait till next season to make things right, if you want to call it that. The, there's no hiding the loss of Jaden McDaniels. Nobody else in that team can fill those shoes. Nobody can. But he's a young player, and he'll bounce back, and he'll 100% learn from this moment. But again, thinking about the now and the team this year, um, it does suck. 
I mean, let's be real, even with him in the lineup, it's not like their ceiling was NBA Finals, but still, they were playing for things. Uh, for the entirety of the play-in and the playoffs, my goal is to co cover the league. I don't know, do I do that? To talk about these games and stuff, um, now that we're here and every game literally matters. So if you're new, subscribe. Um, hit the link in the description to our Enjoy Basketball newsletter. I will be making these videos, but also we got some great writers on the Enjoy team that will be breaking it down and have a different perspective than me. Um, so yeah, hit the link in the description, man. We got, I wanna say 40 something thousand subscribers. So if you're not in there, it is free. Um, you get an email Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and keeping up with all things basketball, and you don't want to miss out. So hit that link in the description. The thing I'm surprised with the most about today is that we didn't see somebody play the game. Because everybody keeps talking about wanting to be the sixth seed. Everybody looks at the, not everybody, a lot of people look at the Sacramento Kings as the easy first round matchup if you're one of the lower seeds. And the team that held their entire destiny uh, most of this day was the Clippers. And in their game, they were they were down to the Darius Baisley led Suns and this clip circling around Twitter of Tyron Lue looking at his assistants asking for the the scores of the other games because if you did not know with the Warriors winning their game and with the Timberwolves also winning their game that would have put the Clippers right in the sixth seed the place where they kind of want to be nobody wanted to be the five seed at least. That's what I believe because you don't want to go against the Suns. They're undefeated with Kevin Durant. And though they have not played anybody super significant in those games they played, they still have Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and other pieces around them that are decent enough where, like, you don't want to see that team in the first round. Because even if you do see them in the first round and you win it for whatever for reason, you win that series, you still got to go against whatever team wins the 1-8. And you got to go against the team that's winning the up. So it was one of the hardest paths to eventually win a championship. And with the Clippers being cognizant of the other scores around the league, I was kind of surprised that they didn't try to play the game. Now, playing the game is objectively a dangerous, dangerous thing. Because their game technically ended before the Temple Wolves and Pelicans game ended. So what if they would have pulled the starters out and lost this game to the Suns and then the Pelicans came back and win that game and now the Clippers are in the play -in. So, like, it was a dangerous thing to be played. But it, to some people, it might have been worth a chance because you might not want to see that Suns in the first round. Again, I'm going to give my overall ideas and thoughts about every single series as we get closer to it. I, it's just just in it. The game just just in it. So I need some time to really think about my thoughts and stuff like that. Obviously, the NBA couldn't predict what the standings were going to be looking like today when they came up with the schedule of everything. But the fact that our first, first nine out of 15 games had no implications to nothing as far as playoffs go is actually funny. Now, we did see some things like the Rockets winning their game against the Wizards changes their odds to potentially getting the first overall pick. So they've been tanking pretty heavily all season long. And there's a world where them winning this random game, this last game of the season to the Wizards, could prevent them from eventually getting Victor Wimanyama. We also saw a lot of coaching stuff with Steven Silas and then Dwayne Casey. Uh, a lot of openings going to be uh, around the league this offseason. It is so hilarious to me that the, that the Rockets did go on to win their last three games. Just, just funny work. Just funny work for them objectively, man. You go on two double-digit loser streaks this season just to win the last three games of the year. As far as the bottom of things go, I think that one of the most significant things out of all of them is, is that the Portland Trailblazers over the last couple weeks got all the way down to have the fifth highest odds this year, which could be extremely important for their future. Um, so good job, I guess. Uh, Shane Sharp has looked good in those last couple weeks, so I mean, yeah. Here's some cool games, but for the most part, every single one of the teams that were there to take care of business did. The Clippers ended up winning their game. The Warriors broke records as far as how many three-pointers they made. The Lakers won their game. Of course, the Wolves won their game, which means the Pelicans lost their game, but like everybody there did. And I was either waiting for a fumble or for somebody to intentionally decide for themselves that it's not worth winning it because we want to try to play the seedings. I don't know, man. I, I feel like this is about to be one of the most unpredictable postseasons we've ever had in the NBA. And I am locked all the way in for it. Um, I can see so many different scenarios. Again, we're going to drop a video talking about the playing specifically. But the fact that there is no Jaden McDaniels and maybe no Rudy Gobert in this one is uh, obviously scary if you're a Timberwolves fan. Now, the NBA play-in has only been around for two real seasons. And every single one of those years, we saw one of the lower seeds jump up. The Pelicans went from the nine seed to being the actual eight seed after beating the Spurs and then beating the Clippers, which means that the Clippers were the higher seed, the eight seed, and end up falling all the way out. And then the year after that, I'm sorry, the year before that, we saw the Grizzlies beat the Spurs and then beat the Golden State Warriors, and the Warriors were the eighth seed that fell completely out. 
So uh, based on the two years of history, it's only two years, based on the two years of history, one of these teams, the Lakers, the Wolves, the Heat, or the Hawks are going down and missing the playoffs completely. Um, and I'm hoping that it's my 10 seed Chicago Bulls that make it happen. It's probably, a, it's, it's, it's unlikely. We got to get through those Raptors and they play good defense. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm going to make an entire video. This was just supposed to be a short, heavy hitter. I'm, I'm disappointed in the Timberwolves video. That's what this, <laughs> that's what this was. Honestly, that's what this was. Warriors Kings. I do not know how I'm going to call that one, bro. I'm, again, I'm, I'm starting to think about the series and stuff. I do not know how I'm going to call that one. The other ones in the Eastern Conference, I have an idea who I think is going to win every series. <laughs> Don't matter who's coming in out there playing out East. I'm taking a higher seed. Spoiler alert. But out West, man, out West, it's going to take a long time to make a predction. Um, but I will. I will. Even though I don't like making predictions, I know y'all love them. So I'll make a prediction even if it ends up being wrong. It is what it is. We've done wrong predictions all the time. This is what I predicted the Eastern Conference standings were going to look like before the season started. I had the top three seeds right. The order wasn't right. I knew the Cavaliers were going to be good. I maybe underrated them a little bit. I overrated the Toronto Raptors. Overrated the Miami Heat. Underrated the Knicks heavily. I had the, I had the Knicks as the 10 seed. So like... Predictions are hard, um, and they always blow blow back in, the, in your face, uh, well, 90% of the time. But one thing I did do is I got all 10 of the, t the, the 10 teams that are in the postseason. I got those right. Um, and I guess that's not saying much, because look at the teams underneath them. Who, who was predicting one of these teams to make the play in? I don't think many people were. And out west, it was a bloodbath. I, I got the one and four seeds right, so that's fun. Um, but everything after that is just madness. I did see that the Mavericks were going to fall off, but they fell off way Worse than I anticipated. And me having the Kings at the 10th seed felt like a bold prediction then. And now they're the 3 seed, sitting comfortably. So, yeah, I guess I underrated the uh, the, the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City Thunder. Shout out to them. Anyway, uh, let me, give, me a, give me a day or so, and I get my thoughts about the plan, and we can make a full play and breakdown. I'll see y'all then.